and people were not designed to be incarcerated at home and they have to get out and indians love going out hi i'm shoma choudhury thanks for watching inquiry we indians are passionate about cinema and india has the largest film industry in the world making almost 2000 films a year now all of that came to a standstill last year so how has the pandemic and our immersion in ott platforms impacted the industry is storytelling forever altered we have a very unusual guest on the show today to discuss all of this ajay bijli the owner of pvr cinema is the infrastructure man of films in india he introduced multiplexes into the country and changed our experience of watching films he's here today to talk about the scaffolding behind stars and storytelling thank you so much for joining me ajay at a time of great upheaval for cinema it's good to be talking to you on inquiry thank thanks shoma for having me you have uh, always been admired i have always admired your programs and the way you cover things so happy to be here ajay i just wanted to start you know for all those who of course know your name but have not had a chance to speak with you directly that you moved away from your family's trucking business and transport business into creating cinema and multiplexes which completely pivoted the way we experience cinema so what was your personal passion how did you move from trucking to cinema yeah so thanks uh, shuma i'll just be brief because at any time uh, uh, anybody asks me about my personal journey i, I get a little unnerved simply because i've got a placard behind my table which says that uh, be modest a lot was accomplished before you were born and even now a lot is getting accomplished all over the world by some brilliant people i was fortunate that uh, i was uh, i got the opportunity to do something with cinemas uh, obviously i was a typical punjabi boy uh, you know in a business family and with a trucking background of uh, since 1939 my father my grandfather has started the business uh, but after doing uh, modern school barakhamba and hindu college i was not very comfortable with the trucking company so 1988 to 1990 i went to chandni chowk naya bazar bag dewar all those areas uh, to uh, learn the ropes of the trucking company fortunately my father had also acquired a cinema in 1978 hmm. and where i used to go as a kid all the time and keep watching mr bachchan's movies like parvarish and hera feri and you know uh, so many movies over and over again mr natwar lal and some english movies as well uh, so when i could was I, when i was struggling with the trucking company uh, then i spoke to my dad in 1990 and said can i i got married around the same time and i had gone for my honeymoon to orlando and i saw a first time a multiplex um, and which was colorful vibrant so i just came back bubbling with this idea that why don't i do something to the family property which is priya in vasant vihar and around that time a lot of cinemas were closing down as well because video boom was at its peak and also government had a, a control on ticket pricing uh, so you couldn't charge more than i think 15 rupees or something so my father said that you know this doesn't look like a good business model but i said let me try and i'll also talk to the delhi government if they can deep control the prices a little bit so i was fortunate uh, that uh, i just made the cinemas very colorful and very vibrant gave them uniforms and all that because i always was influenced by indian cinema which is larger than life storytelling format exaggerated but larger than life and colorful and vibrant i think that's what most of the 1.45 billion people who go to see cinemas in india uh, movies in india they they love that okay so that format still hasn't changed you still have your interval you still have uh, yeah. good looking guys good looking girls whatever dance and stuff like that but the cinemas uh, there was a very uh, i think the transi transition between real life and what was happening on the screen there was too much contrast so I, i thought that if the places where people are sitting and watching the movies as well they can also become colorful vibrant and happy perhaps there's a business out there and people will like to come to these places because it's an event for them when they go out so that's a real ex small experiment that i did and i was very fortunate that people really uh, liked the idea and from there on then i didn't look back i mean i didn't do my trucking business i just kept on doing this unfortunately dad passed away in 92 and i was only 25 years old at that time and i had to go back to the trucking company but then in 94 i had another big issue where we had a big uh, fire in the family uh, one of the warehouses in the trucking company that really demotivated me and de demoralized me that this is not what i really want to do uh, god is kind my mom was uh, has is still with me she's 85 years old and mm -hmm. she saw that my expressions used to change every time i used to go to priya and sell tickets with selina and when i used to go to the trucking company it was a big 
you know, drain on me. So she said, forget about the trucking company. Let your cousins run it. You come back to cinemas full time. And that's when I started the first multiplex uh, in 97. Uh, because 94 to 97, there were no malls, there were no shopping centers, there was nothing. So yeah. I had to pick up an existing cinema, carve it out into a fourplex in Saket, which is Anupam. Then I found something in Narayana, found something in uh, Vikaspuri. Delhi was my market. And from there on, Shoma, I just continued to do. Uh, I was very fortunate that every cinema that I opened did very well. People liked uh, the idea of uh, you know good sound, good seating, hygienic atmosphere, all that. Yeah. And I realized the appetite for people to watch movies was so massive that all I had to do was create a very good conduit between the film goers and the filmmakers. The infrastructure had to be made world class. Yeah. And uh, then people sort of liked, uh, uh, there are other things that I was also noticing. McDonald's was there, KFC was there. So you could see that people were graduating towards a like very clean system was forming around it. The system was forming around. So my timing was okay. And since then I was, uh, you know, just kept growing. And now it's been uh, various rounds of private equities. They've been a listing in the public exchange, all that. And now we're at about 900, 850 odd screens yeah. uh, all over the country. That's, that's, that's quite a journey. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, And it's impacted, like I said, our entire experience, but it also impacted the cinema a lot, you know. So the content also changed uh, with the multiplexes coming in. You yourself are on the threshold of, massive upheaval you know so like right. the halls were closing because video came in uh now the ott's come in and you've had the pandemic so that's two huge uh impacts you know yeah. so let's start with first uh the pandemic how has that you know impacted you of course one knows all the halls were closed do you see a bounce back happening now that it's all opening up or are you still going to have a tailwind on it so, uh, you know, my uh, uh, geography or market that I've always operated in is in India. And always two engines have given me a lot of confidence uh, in the business that I'm in. And one engine is the appetite for people to go out and watch movies. So that is a very, very important uh, 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 thing. And, you know, youngsters, India is full of youngsters. 12 to 34 is the bulk of 80% of our audience is the age between 12 to 34. The other engine which has given me a lot of confidence is the quantity of movies that come. You see, quality is still a subjective issue, but quality is also good. But quantity is about 1500 films. So these two engines have always given me a huge amount of uh, confidence and generally speaking, human nature. So human nature has always been to be at home when you feel like, whether you're eating food or whether you want to read a book or put your feet up and watch TV or watch a program on, or if you feel like you, you go out as well. Yeah. So for me, these things remain in, impacted, the, uh, uh, intact, sorry. These things are still intact. The appetite for people to go out and entertain themselves and the uh, film fraternity, which is continuing to make lots of movies in India. What really, what was the biggest threat is the pandemic. So yeah. I even, even today, if any, anybody asks me, it bothers me that the vaccination pace is very low. It bothers me that, uh, you know, the, nothing like this should ever happen again. It happened at, after 100 years after the Spanish flu. But again, something like this should not happen. I have a lot of uh, uh, confidence in the medical fraternity, I have a virologist and epidemiologist and all that. But I believe that the human nature changing is something that doesn't bother me. I don't think that people, because of one year of this aberration, will stop going out. And I also think OTT is not a threat simply because, not because I'm in this business, because since time immemorial, something at home has always been happening. So the biggest threat to uh, cinema came ages ago uh, when TV came. Then, but TV was only broadcasting news at that time and some documentaries. Yeah. I'm talking about 1920s and whatever. Nothing happened. People still went out and watched movies. Then came the uh, World War I, World War II, the Great Depression, all that. Uh, sim uh, simultaneously, uh, videos came. Uh, uh, TV became color, sorry, prior to that. Yeah, TV yeah. had multiple channels, video came, then DVDs came, LDs came, and then OTT platforms have been around even prior to. In fact, I remember long uh, after uh, the pandemic, somebody just asked me, what is OTT? People didn't even know what OTT was. So then I had to explain, by the way, these guys have been around for a very long time. Reed Hastings made uh, Netflix ages ago. I did his case study in Harvard last year. And... Uh, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, uh, you know, in, in India, you've got uh, Hotstar. Obviously, yeah. the Disney uh, tie-up, it's become bigger. And obviously, Disney 
changed its direction to going into a lot of content at home. But other than that, this has been around for a very long time. But people make their choices, including me. So I really think that the only threat is pandemic. I think the uh, vaccination must be effective and people must get that confidence to get out. Otherwise, the appetite for people to go out is huge. OTTs will remain. I also watch, you know, Netflixes of the world. But what was happening was the long form entertainment at home was more being seen. So you saw your Game of Thrones, you saw your Secret Games, you saw Mirzapur, all these TV series. People said, you know what, let me just see the story getting unfolded over a period of 13 episodes or whatever. I am enjoying the journey of the character, the story getting unfolded at home like this. And I can binge watch as, as well if it's a weekend or whatever. But if I want a quick fix of a two hour movie that gives me that whole experience, I go out, get out of my house and watch a movie, then I still want to go out and watch movies. Yeah. Those lines got blurred a little bit during the pandemic. And I don't blame either. I don't blame the, uh, the content makers because, you know, India is very fragmented. In America, you have four studios, basically, which are making 12 movies a year. Four, I'm saying, because Disney acquired Fox recently. Yeah. India, about 1,500 films are being made by 5,000 producers. You know, it's very mom and pop, pop and son, uncle and mom, all that sort of stuff hmm. is happening. So they panicked. They said, we made so many movies. Now, what do we do? We need to monetize our film. Suddenly, the uh, OTT players panicked because they said, there's no shooting happening. There's no, if you remember the initial time, I spoke to yeah. Udesh, but also a, a hot star, ex hot star in Disney. And he's saying, Ajit, there's no cricket going on. There's no football. There's no basketball. There's nothing happening. So therefore, there was a compelling reason for both these people. And I was shut. My shutters were shut. 9,000 screens in India were shut. So they were, I, I didn't panic at all. I said, this is, this is an aberration. Of course, content guys have to sell their movies and monetize. Uh, and the Amazons of the world have to buy. Because if they don't buy, what are they going to show? And how are they going to increase? So I, I believe that water will find its own level after the pandemic is over. Right. After the, it comes under control. Over, I don't know when it will be with the pace at which the vaccinations are happening. I'm a little concerned with that. But I think that uh, once everything is okay, uh, consumer confidence level comes up, then human nature will dictate uh, how people behave. Yeah. And people were not designed to be incarcerated at home. And they have to get out. And Indians love going out yeah. uh, and whatever. And plus, India, mein ye hai nahi ki there are theme parks like Disney, on there are, you know, uh, baseball games happening. Yeah, I'm just going to say that there's no there's, social there's, outing in India except to go see a movie. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I think that's why 1.45 billion people bought tickets and went out and saw movies uh, till March 2015 last year, just before we were asked to shut down. So I think it'll be all okay, according to me. And for economic reasons as well, not, not because it's a self-fulfilling prophecy, I'm in this business, also because economically 60% of the revenues of any content that was getting created comes from uh, box office. So once the theatrical business is done, two things happen. A, you get to know the revenue potential of the movie because there's no cap. You see, today Amazon and Netflix will just buy and that's it. There's no rev share. But even a small movie of Ayushman Khurana or Razi or Rajkumar Rao runs forever. Because there's no cap. If the pe people want to continue to watch it for 8 weeks, 10 weeks, it keeps running theatrically. Uh, so therefore, what happens is word of mouth is known to the OTT player. They know the theatrical revenue. And then they can bid properly how much they should pay for this con uh, content. Okay. If it is a movie, even of a Salman, but if it flops. So two things have happened. Movie did not do well box office wise. The word of mouth was negative. Then they don't bid an arm and a leg because they know. So when I talk to people and the industry people from both sides, I'm hearing they're waiting for movie movies to come to theaters so that everybody settles down a bit, you know, and they're not bidding unnecessarily. So economic reasons are what are going to drive this as well as much as human nature. So that's, that's what my belief is. But today, you know, nobody can be a soothsayer because of so much uncertainty, but as things stand currently, that's my thinking. So you, you sound pretty uh, upbeat and then there isn't that much upheaval than that one thought that there's going to be. And you're right. You know, people are predicting massive behavior change. I also don't feel there's going to be behavior change because there's a huge pent up demand for people, you know, to do in-person meetings, whether it's uh, over a drink or over a film or uh, just meeting, you know, I, I, you are right. Human nature yeah. doesn't want to be incarcerated. But so then just shifting a little bit, uh, Ajay, if you, 
you know, it's good that you're this upbeat about it. But do you think that uh, to some extent, like when we were talking about OTT, you know, Hotstar, I was looking at the numbers as 300 million uh, monthly users. Yeah. You know, Amazon is 13 million, Netflix is 11 million. Uh, with 800 halls, 9,000 screens, you're probably servicing about... Um, 100 million people. Is it 100 million people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So then there is a kind of parity there. But the presence of the OTT has completely changed the nature of the content. You know, uh, there are different kinds of stories being told. So when you look back at your impact, one seen all the positive impacts. But do you think that, you, uh, you know, the entry of multiplexes created a social barrier uh, you know, there was one half of the country that could not afford multiplexes under any circumstance. And then the entire content changed. You know, you were only serving an audience which was like people like us. Storytelling changed. You, you didn't see the uh, Kala Pathar kind of uh, films anymore, you know. So do you think that now at least there's going to be a division between the kind of cinema that will have a theatrical release and what's happening on OTT? No, I, I, I don't. Uh, look, a lot of movies are still going to get go to OTT still because I think uh, it's a fabulous, uh, uh, fabulous opportunity for creative people to express themselves. Of course, there are these censorship issues which are going on. So I don't know where the dust will settle. I don't follow it uh, too much because I, I'm okay. I mean, if you know, uh, if there is going to be some uh, certification that they do, it'll be okay. So sometimes I'm sitting with my kids and I and I start watching something, suddenly I get shocked that, oh, what are they showing? Because you don't know anything. But in a film, you get to know what is R-rated and all that. If it comes, it's fine. You can become a little more aware that uh, who should be watching the movie. But on an overall if basis... It's rating, it's, if it's rating, it's fine. But if, rating if, is fine. If rating, the government okay. starts censoring... No, that I don't like. Film, that, all that, the creative edge is gone. You no, know? No, I, I, I'm only saying rating, uh, not, not censorship. I think rating is important. Yeah. And uh, uh, so point I was trying to make was that it, I think it's, uh, the pie is becoming bigger. So I, I don't know, I just look at it very positively because the same people who are making content for OTT are also making content for the big screen. Money is flowing back to them. When money flows back to them, they get more encouraged to make movies. So I think it's wonderful to have such diversity of content, some which is playing in cinemas and some which is playing on OTT platform. Also, uh, the film producers uh, are making movies only meant for OTT. So then when they do that, then there's no problem anyway. And film producers are making movies only meant for the big screen. So if you talk to 83, Surya Banshi's of the world, Radhe's of the world, Brahmastra of the world, our, our, our common friend Amir's movie, uh, you know, Lal Singh Chadda is coming, meant for the big screen. So I think the variety is just phenomenal that is happening. I don't think there's any social divide because you and I both live in Delhi. So we take this perception that what is the select city walk ticket price or director's cut ticket price is the price point all across the country. So the price point in India currently is about 150 rupees is the price point of even multiplexes. Right. So suddenly multiplexes definition has become elitist, but the definition is a multiplex is a cinema with four or five screens carved out. That's it, which is showing you different movies at one point. Now, price point can be very low. Like I've got PVR Utsavs in, uh, uh, you know, Nanded, Ujjain, uh, Ghaziabad, uh, so many places, Latur, Aurangabad, all that, where my ATP average ticket price is 100 bucks. So people are getting a very clean, hygienic atmosphere for 100 rupees. Everything is low. My real estate expenditure is low. My operating expenditure is low. Electricity, there is no reason for me to not read the market. So horses for courses is what every operator is doing today. But suddenly if I'm in Vasant Kunj, when my rent goes to 500 bucks a square foot and the consumer is sitting in Vasant Vihar and Vasant Kunj farmhouses, they've got home theaters at home. And I say, how do I get these guys out? You see, all exhibitors like me, our, our objective is only one, that people should get out and watch movies on the big screen. That's it. And, and India is such a disparate market that, that if I don't address everybody, then right. you can, you'll become a niche player. So I was very keen and not just when I say I means there are a lot of operators, yeah. but it, I'm, I'm, when I say I means we, we were very keen that at every price point, there should be a hygienic, high quality cinema experience. So therefore, we are finding all sorts of people, uh, you know, even our, you know, we just opened a master. Uh, I don't know whether you've heard of master no. is the South Indian film, which is uh, released with 50% capacity cap. And it's done about 200 uh, three or two hundred five crores already 
in south and the price point is 120 bucks so this uh, uh, andhra pradesh uh, tamil nadu is already got 150 uh, pri- as a price point and all sorts of people are coming you have uh, people who are you know very wealthy also coming you have people who are you know can't afford uh, to go out so social divide is not happening the other thing about content and i'm a massive movie buff and so are you i know then if you remember even pre uh, uh, multiplexes you had some incredible movies rishikesh mukherjee his movies you had your kala patthars of the world and chupke chupke of the world incredible films even uh, amol palekar's movies uh, nasiruddin shah movies om puri movies uh, shabana azmi movies the problem was that they couldn't fill up a thousand seater cinema a thousand seater cinema with a balcony and front stall very difficult to fill up because even then people wanted to see sholes of the world they still yeah. wanted to see dharamveers of the world so from time immemorial i believe india and internationally has made fabulous satyajit ray so many movies but the opportunity to uh, get these movies commercially viable was not there because the cinema houses were too big everywhere along came multiplexes where you could carve out cinemas with 150 seats 100 seats 50 seats so my cinemas go as low as 30 seats to as high as 350 seats suddenly there's an audience for it so all the anurag kashyaps of the world vikram motwani's of the world have woken up and they are also showing some great films they are making for the big screen but yeah. the viability has improved dramatically and even so i say one more thing uh, which is that the budget uh, doesn't define whether it's a i mean the, the box office revenues define whether it's a blockbuster not the budget so you've got movies which were made for 5 crores 10 crores they did over 150 crores for business so right. if you look at my own movie by the way that is a meeper we did it as a shoe string budget of 13 crores uh, amir obviously took a haircut Uh, metaphorically speaking but <laughs> but even otherwise even if we taken a fee it was a, at a shoe string budget and it did exceedingly well so i think that con- uh, the appetite for people was always there but only when you had 1000 seater cinemas 10000 screens in india people got a little wary there was no ott there was no video demand and they said ab kya kare let's only make blockbusters right. and there was a period where the movies really became very trashy yeah. if you remember yeah. you were like going mad because we all fell between stools <laughs> because yeah. there was, so suddenly when the multiplex is and i'm not taking credit for it don't get me wrong but i was just very happy that you could show incredible variety of movies i don't define the difference between multiplex and cinemas by ticket price i define by the experience so even if you look at there are some incredible single screens in india even now calcutta lighthouse all that who are charging 300 bucks 400 rupees ticket price the format is 1000 seater right. so format doesn't define the price point i didn't realize that i thought <laughs> it had uh, shaved off a particular cinema from a particular class of society not at all not at all a film like parasite would not have had the kind of uh, you know audience that it did which you could now show it in multiplexes but earlier it would never fill a thousand seater you know because bo- bo- niche bo- 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 niche. you know some of these movies are so small even if you look at hollywood they also want to make movies that the world can understand it, it, no brain in the, like avengers Uh, yeah. Fast and the Furious number ten is coming now. <laughs> Maverick, I don't know what movies they are making, honestly, okay. and only for a commercial. So I, I was speaking to one of the studio heads, and I said, "Which movie do you like?" And he's the guy who made, you know, all these movies uh, which are Oscar-winning as well. So I said, "Wow, what a fabulous movie, Parasite, and all that." He said, "No, I only like uh, my only criteria is those movies which make money are my my favorite movies." <laughs> That's it. So nobody's bothered about. the statute oscar statute in their hand yeah. uh, they they all want viability so that's the nature of the beast so it's interesting i mean you're breaking a lot of uh, sort of common ideas about cinema one thought there's this big face off happening between big cinema and you know ott but you're saying no so that's interesting yeah. but so tell me then you feel that uh, that different kinds of content are being created but there's some sense that the big life you know king size hero has lived its time like a lot of those films like as though there's a mood change in society you know i agree with you there i 100% uh, agree with you i think uh, content is the hero these days if the if the content is good it connects with the consumer then 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 that's the time a movie becomes a blockbuster or it, it does well you can you can't just get it. indian audiences have become too mature now everybody even in Uh, urban centers semi urban centers rural centers 
I, I hate to be saying this, but you can't be living on your previous track record and then just spend a lot of money on private, uh, print and advertising and hope that people will come. You'll get them for one day, two days, maybe the weekend gets okay. Monday, the movie will go down. So I think content is the hero these days. That's why I'm again, I'm repeating the names because I'm very uh, uh, impressed with people like Rajkumar Rao, Ayushman Khurana, even, you know, uh, Meghna Gulzar when she made Razi. You know, yeah. these are all, these are very small movies in terms of budget and production value, but phenomenally well. With uh, Vicky Kaushal, with yeah. his Uri and so many, Ronnie makes uh, some incredible movies as well. Yeah. Uh, so those days are gone where you can deceive the uh, consumer by just having a big star. But if you look at big stars like Akshay also are doing a great job. Yeah, he's yeah. also pivoted actually. He's doing much more yeah. sort of story-based cinema now. You know, And he's doing both. When he wants to make a, you know, I don't know, Toiletek Prem Katha or Padman, he'll do that. But he wants to make Surya Vanshi, he'll make Surya Vanshi. I think he's uh, doing a great job. Similarly, Rithik made Super 30. Then he also made War. Uh, and and our Amir is just now in, in that uh, Lal, Lal Singh Chadda zone. But otherwise, because he makes very few films. Yeah. Uh, but I think it's interesting to see, uh, you know, and... Uh, big stars ke replacement bhi aage. for Ranveer hai, Ranbir hai, Shahid hai. Look at the kind of movie Shahid Kapoor is making. There is a Varun. So I think uh, it's beautiful that it's so diversified now that you're not dependent on uh, one guy's movie flopping because every one kick to flopping, for example, not doing well, but due yeah. to Salman, because Salman is a great, you know, Bajangi Bhaija and all that. Suddenly you have one or two movies of Rajkumar and Aishman who more than compensated for the big screen, right. uh, for, for any movie that doesn't matter. Which is the reason why I urge everybody uh, that please release the movie in OTT, but let it play theatrically first. Because theatrically, the sky is the limit. Because we're not going to give you an X amount and that's it. Right. It can keep running if people like it. Why? When the strength of it shows itself. Tell me, uh, do you feel that, you know, over this, speaking of the pandemic, it's interesting that, like I said, that you're this upbeat and that's great actually for everyone. But uh, do you feel that, you know, all that dirty linen washing that happened over the last year uh, after Shushan Singh's suicide, there was so much and also all these allegations of nepotism, then all the camps, clear, you know, became evident in Bollywood. So suddenly all that aura and mystique around uh, being a star or being the cinema industry was badly dented, you know. So do you think that that is going to have a kind of repercussion? Um, or what's your take? Do you think it needs an image makeover? Have people got a bit, uh, you know, have, have lost the luster of uh, Bollywood like they had earlier? What do you think is going to be the impact of all of that ugliness? You know, I was pretty disturbed only with what was going on, to be honest with you. And I, I didn't really get involved in anything. I was just watching. And I, I, I just, frankly, I couldn't identify with what was happening. Honestly, I just, a poor chap, I mean, a really... Uh, 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 amazing actor, great films that he made. And suddenly anybody, 34, I don't know how old he was, 34, 35 years old. Yeah, yeah. I just thought it was a very sad incident. But the repercussions of that which went was beyond my comprehension. I couldn't figure out what was going on. <laughs> so I stayed away from all that. Uh, I was, in any case, my place was shut. So I, I, I didn't have any content or the impact of that on the film fraternity, whether it was positive or negative, did not impact me because I was closed anyway. And, uh, but I think uh, people have short memories. Uh, I think once good content comes, people, they'll come. I don't think anybody, Indian audiences is what I believe in. And the Indian audiences will not hold a grudge against somebody who was uh, shown in poor light during that episode if he comes out with a movie which is fabulous and connects with them. So I, I, I think, I don't think any long-term repercussions like that will happen to the business. I, I don't think people will hold such personal grudges uh, they will treat them as actors who are performing. And if they're doing a good job, they will go and watch a movie, whether it's a director or a producer or an actor. That's my, my feeling. Right. I don't think they'll say, oh, this guy was embroiled in this controversy. So I'm not going to watch his movie. I think uh, there's too much peer pressure and FOMO. If, if Surya Banshi is good and everybody's talking about it, they're going to go and watch it. They're not going to look at who is the producer or director or actor. If 83 is coming, again, they're going to forget about a lot of things. I think... People have short memories and, and they'll forget. And I think that that issue should be like put to bed now, according to me. <laughs> because you know this industry so intimately, you know, all this allegation about nepotism, about, you know, groups, about influencing the outcome of films. 
very dispassionately speaking, you know, how true is that phenomenon and how worrying is that phenomenon? I, I, Shuman, not because of anything else, I really think the, it doesn't matter who your, you know, uh, parents are. Uh, ultimately, you have to be able to perform and connect with the Indian audiences. There are several examples of people who did not have any background and then they've done exceedingly well uh, in the industry. Even people like Shah Rukh, you know, he, he didn't come from anything, even if you like Akshay and all. And similarly, uh, so only maybe the initial thing, uh, maybe you can get a good opening or a good opportunity to act in a film because yeah. of uh, uh, this thing. But I think ultimately it's your performance, your connection with the consumer. There are so many examples of, unfortunately, uh, you know, actors and actresses or directors who are part of uh, a film family, but they've not been able to do very well because they haven't connected. Uh, so I think uh, uh, it'll all be, talent will uh, speak for itself. Doesn't matter what your background is. At the same time, there are some exceedingly talented people who, who uh, families are, in, whose families have been from the uh, business like Ranveer and all. Yeah. They do very well. I don't know Ranveer whether he was in some family. Ranveer Singh, I don't know what family, uh, whether it's from actor or film fraternity. But yeah. like I'm seeing so many examples. So I don't think nepotism is something that can take you for, uh, far. Want to, uh, yeah, in, in any business. And sometimes, you know, uh, uh, I also find that unka to kami hai. You know, like for example, if I'm, uh, let's say I'm not running a listed company and I'm running a jewelry store. I mean, most of the uh, Indian entrepreneurs or businessmen or even doctors, lawyers, the, the propensity is that lawyers, if you look at it, everybody's a lawyer in the family. Doctor, everybody's a lawyer in the family. So when I look at the front fraternity, that's all they know. They, that, if you look at anybody's family, like yeah. uh, lack of an example, Anil Kapoor's family, everybody is an actor or a director. So obviously they would want, the son has gone to USC, he's done film school. What, is it, what else is he going to do? You yeah. know, so they're brought up in the atmosphere of, you know, films surrounded by films, their fathers and mothers, their uncles or actors or directors or whatever. So I think it becomes a very natural choice for the parent also to say, you become an actor. But then after that, there's nothing that can be done. Once the opportunity is given, like if you look at Rakesh Shoshan, I remember long ago when he was doing this movie, Koi Mil Gaya. Yeah. And uh, he had come, uh, you know, we, we were talking because he needed some uh, special effects, uh, uh, you know, that Jadu character that he had. So yeah. I, Australian company knew me and they knew special effects. And he was launching Ritik and he said that, what will Ritik do? He will acting, hi karega. the whole life he's only done this. <laughs> he's going to do that, so I'm going to... But then he did not know whether he'll connect with the audiences so well. That happened because of his own sheer uh, connect with the audiences. So I don't think that is an advantage or a disadvantage. I think the accusation is about the star creating machinery, you know, that that is a captive machinery. Uh, which is utilized more for insiders than for outsiders. So do you think there's any uh, truth in I, that? I don't see any biases simply because, you know, uh, all these filmmakers, they want their movie to do well. And ultimately, no matter how many phone calls go to them from anybody's fathers, uncles or whatever, they look at the script and they look at who will be the right person for the movie because they're all very conscious of ensuring that the movie does well. They get there, it connects with the consumer. So I've seen that, you know, uh, that they, I did seven movies, as you know. So I, the thought process is like that, that, okay, who will fit yeah, the we'll role? See, yeah. Last thing that comes on anybody's mind is that, oh, let's get this guy because he's somebody's son or somebody's daughter. They, they, they look at the budget. How much this guy is going to, overall, the movie, ka kitna budget hoga? what is the role, uh, 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 the character uh, that is being, you know, portrayed? Who can play that character? Well, who's available? And at what cost is he available? Yeah. Secondly, how is this uh, previous movie done? Is he connecting with the audiences or not? So they, they hedge their bets very carefully. Obviously, uh, children of, you know, star parents are going to get an easier launch. But whether they succeed is not in anybody's hands, you know? Yes. The launch part, I agree with you. There, obviously, you can, you know, get a good thing. But I don't think even the other guys will, will they'll be very diplomatic in then refusing him as well. If in the launch, the movie does not do well, <laughs> if, if there's no connect. Because as I said, the consumer sniffs it out immediately. He sees uh, somebody on the screen and said, oh, I like this guy. And he, I'm connecting with him. So just final questions to uh, end on, Ajay. Like I said, uh, it was 
a sense that the industry is in massive upheaval, but you are at the heart of it and you're saying there isn't that much. So that's great for everyone. But uh, I wanted to understand, you know, just so we've spoken about the stars, the directors, the distributors, but there's an entire economy of people in the industry, you know, which is from spot boys to all the ancillary people involved was, you know, this pandemic showed up the inequity hugely, you know, like we saw the migrant exodus, even within the industry. Uh, I'm sure the upper layers could sustain themselves, but what happened with the workers uh, in the industry? Is there any thinking now about creating safer structures? Can you help us understand what happened there? You know, uh, you know b- before I, I come to this, um, I just want to say upheaval hua tha. Upheaval didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, just, of course. Uh, just that I, I, uh, I, I just was doing what was the right thing at the right time. And my mindset became a little optimistic and positive. Otherwise, we were devastated. I had 15,000 people. I had to lay, uh, uh, lay off 9,000 people. We had to cut down a lot. We got... Um, uh, uh, I had to really plead with the developers not to charge me rent during uh, this thing. But it's just that that was the thing to do. So I was not never looking at the big picture. I was saying, oh, today we need to cut down our expenses. Today I have to negotiate rentals down because I'm shut for eight months. Now I have to go to the government and request them to allow me to open. I have to go to this government uh, body to ask me to give me some reliefs, which I didn't get. You know, uh, the, internationally they got furloughs. Uh, most of the uh, uh, so cinema industry didn't get anything. So there was a lot of thing going on. But somewhere I was not thinking and getting bogged down. So which has got me this kind of a demeanor that that I'm because if you get bogged down, then obviously you're going to become negative. Yeah. But because I was able to, with the grace of God and you know my the way my mom guided me, my family guided me, people around me guided me. I just wanted to. If it's a bouncer, duck. If it's a middle one, just play in the middle, if it's a thing, yeah, chalk out. Like, so I was just doing that. that. Nothing more, nothing less. But back of my mind was only the, that the virus must come into control. What do you think the loss in this industry over this year has been? Or say for your company, if you don't have a... Whoa, uh, I don't have the nationwide figure, but massive it is. Like, you know, we are talking, just our company alone had about 600 or five or 600 crores loss we've had. But if you look at the overall box office revenues, I've just got, sorry, just give me a second. The overall box office revenue of the com- uh, country is $1.6 billion, which is about uh, uh, 12,000, 15,000 crores. So 15,000 crores only came from box office. So of course that's got lost in a, in a big way. So India has lost a lot of money and uh, over and above that. That's why I was saying that it is difficult to ignore exhibition business because globally $42 billion was spent on tickets, just tickets. No. $21 billion went to the exhibition industry. $21 billion went to the studios, people who made movies. That's a lot of money to leave at the table and then run after OTT platforms. I was asking you about the level of workers. I only know on the exhibition side, as I said, we had to ask a lot of people to leave because obviously the cinemas were shut, housekeeping, security, all that. But as the business is ramping up, we're recruiting everybody back now. Uh, right. But obviously, uh, but senior people had to take haircuts, no remunerations, 50% cuts and all that. So there were a lot of issues. Uh, I think if, if that's happened on this part of the value chain, exhibition industry, I shudder at the thought of what must have happened on the production side. I just want to end, uh, Ajay, because you, know, you, have, you have this insight about form and content and how it's been moving. But <laughs> something has definitely happened in cinema, which is that you never see, almost never see any films about the working class anymore. You know, you are getting films about small town India now, like you were saying, Ayushman Purana excels at that. But, uh, you know, the old Hindi cinema where it was a kind of cement, a a scotch tape between all the classes, at least they were part of people's imagination. Why has that got completely hived off? It's like there's no empathy, no imagination, not in news media not in cinema, nowhere. It's like invisible India, you know? So why is that? actually. And there's so many stories out there. I, I can't remember off the top of my head, but I think Pipli Live was the last movie yeah. I saw uh, that Amir only made. If you're talking about the old uh, Om Puri, Nasiruddin Shah, Smita Patil, uh, yeah, Shamana Azmi type, yeah. those kind of movies, are, uh, you don't see them too much at all. I think Do you it, have any insight as to why that's fallen off the map? I, I, I don't know, to be honest with you. I think maybe they think the audience is very limited. 
and the budgets are still high to make those kind of movies but it's it's sad it's a very good observation because i think there's so many the diversity of india is phenomenal there should be stories coming out of every nook and cranny uh, this uh, art, ayush article uh, you know article, article which was 14 yeah that was the ayush mahal is a is a cop yes article 14 yeah so, the rate what a movie yeah. so i i thought there are coming but but less the newton movie of rajkumar rao was again how elections happen in uh, yeah. small town maoist yeah. uh, yes. I, i i think economically if they can make it at a smaller budget then i think it um, then obviously they can come out with it and if you can get a very good platform release as they do internationally they release it in smaller lesser screens and then slowly the word of mouth builds it but 100% i agree with you these kind of movies must be made but they may the less, less are being made so just to end on a personal note ajay i started on a personal note that <laughs> what what was your sort of darkest moment uh, during this one year and you know is there any incident is there any point at which you felt rock bottom and what did you do to get yourself out of it i'm reading obama's book and i'm really influenced by one chapter that is written about what version of life do you want to live so there's a version of life which is very one dimensional that this is my business my business is down and i am down so that's one version of life there's another version of life where you say there are other things your health is okay you've got kids who are good you've got a wife you've got a ecosystem around you you've got friends whatever so i decided that's the version of life i want to live i don't want to only think about one dimension which is my business having said that of course it was a body blow <clears throat> when this happened from getting 100 million people to the cinemas opening 100 screens a year and i don't like talking numbers i, I just don't like talking numbers but suddenly to have a cinema your business completely shut was a body blow it takes a a man with massive amount of resilience and no visibility of uh, opening and you only fire fighting that took a lot out of me uh, but that was okay i managed it with the ecosystem that i have but i think the biggest lowest point was probably when selina fell sick that that i thought was a bad one when she went to medanta i said everything else i can take but that 6 7 days of not being able to uh, visit yeah. her communicate only when she was okay and not on the remedies were and uh, you know through the facebook that i thought was a was a was the lowest point for me because i think you can take everything but you can't take your loved one getting impacted yeah. <laughs> thank you so much ajay It was great talking to you